right. Welcome back, guys. EYL episode 27. Yeah, we made it 27 weeks. 27 and weeks. Rolling. In, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, picture that's, us rolling. That's a fact, man. First and foremost, thank you guys for your support. It's been a it's been a tremendous journey, man. Everybody can't believe only six, seven months in. They like it's crazy. That's like the common theme. We're like, what? Really? Yeah. How? How? Yeah. Before we do anything, we gotta give a shout out to the city of Atlanta. Um, if you are familiar with the podcast, you know we're on tour right now. We're hitting all of our major markets and just doing networking events and meet and greets. So we just came back from Atlanta. Literally. And um, <laughs> yeah, Atlanta was crazy. Atlanta was crazy. You know, everybody came out, the city showed support, we met good people. Um, we got to give a shout out to Digital Brands Sure. with a Z at the end. They're in the process of help uh, rebranding and redoing our website. Um, so we definitely got to give a major shout out to them and shout out to Jazz Jackson. It's simply Jackson from on Shy. Instagram from Shot. Shout out to yeah, Chicago. From Shy. She showed us major love out in Atlanta and she's actually the connector between Digital Brands. So stop by their website, digitalbrands.com biz with a Z at the end mm-hmm. um, and show them some love because those guys are amazing. They do great work. But we have a very special guest here today, Sean Bullard, um, who his story is actually, I was telling Troy, like he actually fits all of the criteria of our <laughs> yeah. website, of our podcast. The podcast is a backstories of business, sports, and entertainment, Check right? The financial. <laughs> so he does all three. Yeah, he fits all three, right? I'll give a quick overview. So he used to be a professional athlete, played for the Chargers on the NFL, and he's a real estate developer. Yep. He is a serial entrepreneur. He has... Skincare line. He has a bunch of stuff we're going to talk about. And he also was a star of a TV show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Match Made in Yeah, yeah. He, was star of a, he was a star of a TV <laughs> show, kind of like The Bachelor on, on, on We TV. They, so, they, they, were, they, were, they were promoted as the first African American Bachelor. Yeah, the first African American <laughs> Bachelor. So that, that's, that's the Lion King of Bachelors. Business, sports, and entertainment, right? You got them all. So first and foremost, thank you. Thank you for, for joining us. No, nah, man, it was a real pleasure being here. I, you know, I love you guys' show. And then uh, I think I reached out to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, I was like, yo, bro, I need to be on your show, <laughs> man. Like, what's up? You know? And uh, nah, it, it's it's an honor being amongst greatness, man. What you guys are doing, um, you sh- don't you shouldn't be surprised that you are blowing up this fast. I mean, you guys are gonna have you guys are gonna be on like TV, TV, like one day. I see it. You Appreciate know what I'm saying? That. Absolutely. That. And and even if they don't see it, you guys saw it yourself. So. I'm just honored to be here and, you know, let's get it. Yeah, no, nah, yeah. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. So let's jump right into it. Okay. So Sean, as I said, he um he's from Philly and he went to Temple University. Shout out to Temple. Shout out to Philly. And uh, he was fortunate enough to make it to the NFL, right? So the interesting thing, because we interviewed an NFL player before. We interviewed an uh, NFL agent. And we got a lot of relationships with a lot of guys in the league. Um, but a lot of guys, especially in the league, they reach out to me and, you know, they're interested in business. They're interested in financial literacy. But... It's not really taught to them, right? Because especially being a star athlete your whole life, you know, you're, you're not really focused on business per se. You're focused on your sport, right? right. You, you, you know, it takes a lot to become a professional athlete. And even when you get in the league, a lot of times, even with a lot of financial advisors, it's more so just trust my word. Yeah. Somebody else handling the business. Yeah. yeah. But you actually, you actually brought your first property while you were still in college, right? Yeah. So, all right. Mm-hmm. What made you want to invest in real estate when you wasn't even, you didn't even graduate from college yet. And how did you actually invest in real estate? I'm assuming your income was low and being a college student. Like, how'd that work out? Back in 2003, the reason I, uh, I invested in it, or even made me start thinking about real estate, I'm gonna be, I wasn't even thinking about real estate. I was just thinking about ball and, um, and getting on scholarship. Because I walked on the temple. I had to earn everything that I've always had. Um, and once I saw I was balling, and I was going to get on a full scholarship because I was a college dropout. Actually, I didn't score over eight hundred on my SATs. Mm. You get five hundreds for signing your name, but I was a, I was a um, three way athlete in, in Catholic school, all American. I fell asleep on my SATs. I didn't even take it serious. I didn't know it was that serious, and then uh, I couldn't even get into the schools that I wanted to get into. Um, uh, so once. That happened. I had to go. I went to Johnson C. Smith in North Carolina, all black school, Mm -hmm. you know, to get my grades up. I went down there. I actually was hanging with the wrong crowd. I got stabbed five times. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, fighting like, yeah, like little gangs in college. Just like, bro, like, just go to school. (laughs) Like, I'm looking back like, yo, you know what I mean? Just go to school and get your degree. I went back. you know, I was a, that was the fall of 99. I went back, you know, the, the, the spring of 2000, 
and just to show like, look, man, this ain't gonna beat me or whatever. Like I'm I'm not scared to go back. And then after that, it was like, you know what? I always wanted to be better than what I was. So um, then this, I always should have been like at a bigger university. So I went back home to Temple, couldn't get in the Temple. Um, the next thing I know, uh, um, I'm out of school. So I'm working at a NCO uh, uh, Financial, which is a, a bill collecting agency. And I swear to God, like this place was like full of like ex-cons and strippers. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And when you, when, and when you, and when you think about it, that's who got the gift of gab. Ex-cons, hustlers and strippers, you know what I mean? To get that paper out of you, you know what I mean? Make you pay your bills or whatever. And I remember, and there was a dude named like Bill, it was like this white gay guy, but he was like always in like polo, purple label. He was one of the executives, you know, they had the, the executive parking spots where the Ferraris and the Porsches was or whatever. And then you saw a lot of people that, like I said, needed second chances or, you know, if it was if they was dancers, they still needed like a way of show a W-2. So they worked there and they was hustling. And I actually learned how the gifted gab and hustle being around that sector. After a while, I started hustling myself a little bit, you know what I'm saying? And, and we had like a, a park or whatever that we, we used to like sell pounds of weed and all that type of stuff. And I started making a little bit of money. But like uh, like anything else, like with, with, with uh, women, you know, they 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 bring out the the um if they influence us. And I remember my girlfriend at the time in college, it was um he used to play basketball for Temple and we were sitting on her couch and she was like, Yeah, he always he had just got picked up by the Sixers. He was trying to make the team. And she was like, he always first for me in my such and such class. And that just put a fire under me. Like, you used to be that. You used to be the athlete. And now, you know, you dropped out and you this, that, and the third. At that moment, I made my decision to uh, go back to school and become what I should have been, you know, a, a, a Division One um, athlete. And I, I got back into Temple. Um, on like a, a preliminary basis to prove like with like basic uh, classes. So you're like on probation to get it back into school? Exactly. Okay. You know, I got denied actually and by the grace of God, uh, one a woman that went to my church was in the admissions office, pulled some strings and got me in. Like you need angels. You know, some people say luck, some people say blessed. I think it's like they, those two are correlating artists. They one in the same, but are two uh, different things. And, you know, and um, I got in and I made uh, made the team, and you know I actually became a full scholarship athlete. Tragedy happens. I uh, uh, break my femur playing West Virginia. It was a dirty play by the fullback or whatever. And next thing you know, I might not even be playing football again. At that time, I realized me always weighing the options. Football isn't forever, and um, I need if I'm going to be rich or wealthy, I need something that's going to make me rich or wealthy. And uh, a friend of mine put a bug in my ear, along with uh, about real estate. I didn't really understand it at the time, but my dad was a foreman. He was a construction guy, so I kind of understood it, but not really. And I read a book that I, I tell everybody to read: "Rich Dad, Poor Dad," yeah. and that Robert Kiyosaki. That was your book tip, right? Yeah. <laughs> that that got my wheels turning on looking at economics and real estate differently because we don't. You know, like you guys said, uh, Rashad and Troy, we don't really, that's self-taught, we don't really hear about real estate in the hood and wealth building and things of that sort. Yeah, because even at Temple, you weren't studying anything that had to do with real estate. I wasn't studying nothing, man. I was studying girls and football. Right? <laughs> right, that's right, what right. I was studying, you know what I'm saying? And and plays and how to take your head off if you came across the middle. That's the, That was my thing. And, um, um, and, and music, of course. But other than that, once I started looking into that, in 2004, um, um, you know, I um, once I came back from my injury, started to uh, play football again. Um, I was I started looking at um, real estate and learning, and I went to a uh, a uh, conference called uh, National Grant Conference. And I tell people this, my stories, listen to the little details. Because the whole way I'm learning, but I haven't pulled the trigger yet. And I think a lot of, especially today with the microwave era, we want that instant gratification. I started thinking about real estate in 2003, but I didn't really pull the trigger in 2005. But for those two years, I'm learning. Mm -hmm. 
So I went to a place called NCO, uh, uh, not NCO, uh, National Grant Conference, and they went from, and every everybody has people people like this. They got HGTV people that used to be on HGTV, but now they just go conference to conference. Um, what you call it even does that uh, on the, the Breakfast Club now. Um, Envy. Envy. Yeah. yeah, yeah Envy's yeah, starting yeah. to do that, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, a shout out to him for doing that. Um, I definitely should be one of the guest speakers. In that. <laughs> <laughs> but like, and... They would tell you enough that actually you they would drop some free gems, and but then up to that point, then they would be like, "All right, if you want more, now you got to give us a thousand dollars and sign up." Right? <laughs> and I would I waited and I went and they, I went to one of the things. I learned some stuff, and they was like, "I give me a thousand dollars." At that point in time, what happens? Seventy percent of the room always walks out, right? I was one of the ones that stayed, but I'm 20 years old. I had no money, like, you know, a thousand bucks to give y'all. So I went home, asked my parents. They said, boy, you crazy. You better go ahead and finish college. So what I did, as soon as I went on scholarship, I took out a uh, a, a loan um, uh, for a student loan for $10,000. And that 10 grand was a refund check because I'm on full scholarship. And I took 1,000 from that 10 and gave it to that uh, um, uh, to that conference. And from that conference, I learned, you got a little booklet, and I learned something called a 203K loan. And that 203K loan, uh, I mentioned, yep, yeah, you mentioned yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, sure. And back in those days, which was the good old days, you can do a stated income. Yep. Stated income. And I did stated income. <laughs> the good old days. The good, <laughs> the good old, old days. days. Yeah. But it's a great thing if you got fiduciary <laughs> responsibility and then you want to do the right thing with what you think. But, you know, 90% of the people don't, man. You make you make the money. You won't go out buy a Bentley or you want to get a new TV. All my boys on the team, they was buying... Jordans with their little per diem from like the checks when we would go playing. I was stacking mine, you know, instead of living in the dorms, I lived at home with my mom, um, with my mom and I, I, wrote a, I wrote a lease from my mom to me as if my mom was renting the room in my own house oh. and made Temple in Temple The scholarship the money, they gave you the scholarship money. They gave me the scholarship money. So if anybody's not familiar, I'll interject because I used to play, I went to the University of Hawaii. So similar situation where, you have on-campus housing for athletes and you have off-campus housing. So a lot of schools, they kind of force you to live on campus. But some schools, like when I was in Hawaii, what they did was they gave us the check for housing and then we get apartments off campus. So the check was like $6,000, right? Mm -hmm. Then let's say your apartment is $3,000. Now you got a difference of $3,000. So you can just splurge on Jordans <laughs> or you yep. can, but you was actually smart because you didn't, you kept all the money because you was living at home. I was living at home. That's pretty responsible. Even like the student loan thing. Like I know guys have done that. Like, yo, I'm gonna take out the student loan for more than I really need and I'm gonna use it for something else. But like Exactly. But you invested in your future. I invested in my future. And um so I hope people are listening just in this world to just get successful, man, you just gotta think outside the box and mm -hmm. understand that everything is possible and everything is like chess. This is it's like a game. Mm -hmm. So when I was when I wrote that when I wrote that um and understand, I hate people that say, oh, I can't, or no, or they always got like the first thing, well, this ain't going to work. How do you know it ain't going to work? I told the university, I'm living at home. I had a lease. My mom wrote it. It's 500 a month for the room. Hey, man, you got to take it. It might be a loophole, but you got to take it, right? So once I, once, once, once I did that, I learned, uh, took out uh, that 10 grand. I had 9,000 left. Over. I had 9,000 left over. And uh, I put that down on my first duplex. Yeah, and it was a uh, it was a doozy, man. It was it looked like you know bombs from Baghdad <laughs> hit it. You know, it was it was huge though. It was like three thousand square feet, um, and I, I fixed it up. I ran into some problems with the builder. You know, I had a, a, a pastor. He was a he's a pastor at a church, and but he was and he was a, had his own construction company called Kingdom Builders. And I was like, ain't no way in hell, man, I'm gonna get gypped by a pastor. And I got jipped by the pastor. <laughs> he didn't know what the hell he was doing. I remember walking in. This was the day that, and this is fast forward, 2005, I got undrafted free agent from the Chargers. I'm back and forth for two years, you know, on on and off, like like being in limbo with the team. And, um, and um, in 2005, I'm fixing up the house while I'm in school with, with uh, the pastor uh, 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 at Kingdom Builders. And um, I walk in, 
and I see three guys painting one window. One guy <laughs> on the ladder painting, one guy holding the, the actual bucket of paint, and another and the third motherfucker watching. And that's when I was like, yo, nah, nah. And that's when I was like, you know what? I don't need nobody. I'm going to start running my own job. So I ran out. Ran into their own job. I'm training it to, to make it to, to the league. I get an a internship with a real estate developer in Philadelphia. And at that point, this goes to the point I was we were talking about earlier, you know, Rashad, is um, I saw it. I, I saw what I wanted to do because I, he was right in front of me. This dude was worth almost a billion dollars. How'd you get connected with him? So how I got connected with him, it was um, that's a good question. We had a, a senior, a senior, um, senior seminar, uh, a billionaire brunching. It was called billionaire brunching in my senior seminar class, and it was uh, Steve Klein of uh, the Klein Company who ended up being giving me an internship. Steve Corman of Corman Communities, which is Corman, is huge. I'm talking billions. He got high rises down Manhattan, Philly. Um, him and his sons run run the company now. It was a CEO of uh, Citizens Bank at the time, and then it was Sister Mary Skellion who owns one of the largest nonprofits in Philadelphia. And um, the night before, I did my research on Steve Klein and Steve Corman, so I can walk up to him. And this, and Steve Steve Corman was like he was kind of he was like Omega, like dude was like too big for me to even really like. Nothing against uh, uh, all due respects to Mr. Uh, uh, Steve Steve Klein, but um, Steve Corman was just like I didn't really relate to him as much. But Steve Klein was like cool, like real cool Jewish man. He was um, he did projects like loft projects in like Maitland, Florida, and he was he was he was huge. I mean, he's huge, but he was he was um, relatable to me. And I walked up to him after we did the brunch in and everybody's leaving. I'm walking towards, I swear I was the only student to walk towards them while everybody was leaving out. And what that told me that, that nobody saw themselves able to approach these cats. Mm. So, you know, take advantage of your opportunities. You know what I mean? I only have too many, I don't have too many, um, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, regrets when it comes to opportunities i take advantage i try to take advantage of all my opportunities only regret i have is recently when i was interviewed at uh this is 50 i'm a i'm a i'm a huge 50 cents fan and i'm walking out and he was and 50 was down there talking at, at the board i should have just bust in there to let him know, <laughs> like yo bro you have changed like you have been like a driving force in my life and where i'm going and like how much i looked up to him because i don't look up to many people you might owe money for that, though. Huh? Yeah. You might have to owe some money for that. You want money by Monday. Hey, by Monday. <laughs> on 50 Cent, is, I mean, that's a, that's a good problem to have. I mean, the he, last dude ran up on him. He was like, yeah, it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. But I, I was actually in the this, the this is 50 office, though. You know what yeah, I mean? You, you was halfway there. Yeah, I mean, that, I that. but that's true, too, man. Like, you, you saw something that you could aspire to be, and that's something that we've been pr trying to preach. It's like, it's tough, especially from in our community, it's tough. to want to be something if we've never seen it. Like... Every day, the message of athlete entertainer is put in front of us, it's whether we like it or not. Well, right? we like it or not. So you saw the opportunity. I mean, how many more chances will you have to sit in a room with billionaires? Well, billionaires, so right? And you I saw it and went for it. Right, I saw it and went. And actually, where I just moved to, I moved to it so I could meet a billionaire and look what happened. I met a the friend of the billionaire, and I've been talking to him. He's really impressed. He can't believe how far I've come on my own. You know, which also lets me know, and I'm coming down here today to meet you guys. He emailed me off of something that I was running by him three days ago, and he was thinking about me in the entry on to say, you know what, I are what we talked about before. I think I misstated what what you should do with that property and ran it down. This dude is worth over his portfolio is worth over a billion dollars. I'm on a train. I open up my email. He's he's thinking of me, and and you know, which is crazy. You. You become the company you keep and you who you aspire to be. So back to the, to the story, I'm, I'm walking up to um, uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, I call him Mr. Klein. He hates it because he, he wants to be like cool and young. And uh, but it's all out of respect. I said, you know, Mr. Klein, I said, I love what you're doing in Maitland, Florida. I remember saying I like those uh, apartment, those loft apartments are kicking ass down there. It's that in the third. You know, I know I knew white people that love saying kicking ass. So I remember saying <laughs> that to him. And um 
And he was like, who are you? And I was like, I'm Sean Bullard. And I was like, I would love to intern with you. I was like, it's not my major, because my major was sport rec and facilities management. That's another thing. When you go to college, you just get the piece of paper. You know what I'm saying? Just get it. You can be, you don't even, I never even <laughs> used my degree. And, um, and he said, all right, well, I'll see if we can give you an internship. I said, look, you're on the board. You donate a lot of money to the university. They're not going to turn you away. Let's put the pressure on them. Mm -hmm. and, um, and next thing you know, a week later, his, his uh, um, assistant, who was still with him, gave me a call. And they gave me an internship. I was making $500 a week. And I would go, this dude has a country club with mansions around it. I was working the grounds there for like two weeks. Then I, uh, another week I would work at one, I'll be a maintenance man in one of his like apartment building complexes. And then the third week I would go and then I would be suited up every day with the executives in the boardroom talking about the next projects. And that's, and, that, and at that moment, um, um, I, one of his guys was his VP of development, his job. And this is when, when you talking about, you know, Troy, we don't see this in the hood. We don't have this as an example, his job. He got paid two hundred thousand a year to fly his the, to to be to fly Mr. Klein's private jet around the United States to find land that he could buy. <laughs> I didn't even know that was possible. I was like, "What? You don't sit at like a desk all day?" Dude came in a line, came in suited up. First dude I ever saw that didn't wear that wore a suit not with a tie. He had the two button the two buttons open. First time I ever saw that. So he, I thought that was so cool. He's literally just like Google mapping, trying to find land? Trying to find land, and he would, he would Mr. Klein say, hop on my... I remember Mr. Klein coming into the office when he found on some land that he was going to buy. He bought some land for like $10 million And he was like, yeah, now you, he's like, now you, I need you to go next week to Texas to, to, to look at it. Like, he was like, I got you. <laughs> and on his jet. So did you, did you, <laughs> did you keep relationships with, them, with him when you, yeah. stayed, when you was in the NFL? Yeah, I kept relationships with them. Um, he actually took me out to lunch about uh, almost a year ago. So, a breakfast. Okay, these guys are like mentors now. Yeah, he, him, he, he Mr. Mr. Klein is like, is he's still hard to get in contact. I got more other mentors that are, that are um, like the White Carey has been a big mentor with me. Um, I met him. He's a professor at Temple, but he's major. He won't even tell me how major he is, but he's super major. Um, but um, yeah, he these cats have been like have been mentors, you know, absolutely. Yeah. So when I saw it, that's when I knew I wanted to be that. That's when it was like, yo, NFL money ain't ain't nowhere near this money. Yeah. Not for long. Not yeah, not for long. Yeah. So that's why like on my Instagram, you know, Sean underscore Zaddy underscore Bullard is I try to I don't, I'm not, I'm not no square proper dude. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I'm a, still like, I'm from the streets. I'm, 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 I'm hood, but I'm just polished. And I try to keep that. I try to take that hip hop and that polishedness, but a, um, uh, refer it to real estate to make, you know, uh, our kind be able to understand it more. And it's, I think it's starting to, to catch on. Yeah. All right. You're in the right place for that. Yeah. That's right up my alley. So, right. <laughs> all right. So, so we're going to, so we now in the next segment, we're going to talk about real estate and, and, and your, your new phase of your life. All right, so now we're going to go in the second segment. And um, so you played two years in the NFL, yeah. and that's like right along the lines. Somebody said NFL stands for not for long, yeah. right? Because NFL players don't have a long career, right? They don't yeah. even really make that much money relative to like baseball and basketball, right? Mm -hmm. So you play two years in the league, then you come back to Philly, and now you start your second phase of life, whereas you're a real estate developer, right? Mm -hmm. But for commercial property. So mm -hmm. it's interesting because we spoke off camera. A lot of people are doing real estate right now, which is encouraging. Good. We need everything we so own. i we mean gotta own. We gotta yeah own. we gotta own as much sure. as we possibly can but you only really see a lot of people on the on the development side especially the development side as far as commercial properties right right so coming back from the league starting from scratch in real estate well pretty much you had one property but not you know yeah. an empire what made you want to develop your own real estate company and how what was the steps you took to do that bottom line i didn't trust nobody and uh i understood uh um that it's a term it's called you have to manage the labor and when you manage the labor you or manage the work a lot of people they trust too much in the other people with their own destiny and when you're starting out early on that's what you're doing and um when i told you guys about three guys painting one window i was like you know what i gotta be here looking at these cats 
getting the most out of them because what people don't understand with real estate, man, as soon as that you sign that that note for that loan, it's like ready, set, go. That interest is starting to kick in. You got to start making payments uh, on that money. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, you, speed is the name of the game. So um, uh, that's why I said, you know what? And now I know what it means. I'm still, you know, we, I'm still learning. Um, but I, I set up a vertical supply chain, you know, which is basically a, a company that is three companies within itself. So I'm the guy that does the acquisition. I got my own construction company. And I got my own management company, all in house. How and long did it take you to do that? I did that right away. I was doing that when it was just me. I was, I was the, 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 the you know. So you fill all those roles. All those roles. <laughs> all right. You know what I'm saying? I still, I, and I'm the CEO. I still do that. You know what I'm saying? I got, but now I'm not the guy fixing the toilet on the management just side. Three different companies. Three different companies. Yep. Yep. So. Um, you got, you know, Concrete Investments, Inc., LLC, and then, uh, you know, Watchman PM. And um, those three those three companies, um, you know, handle like those three roles. So the commercial side of it, because commercial can seem like when people, commercial can be residential as well. So commercial real estate is not just strip malls or right, like whatever right. you know a one-story commercial joint commercial real estate can be which i do i do most of my stuff is mixed use that's the technical term uh where you got apartments upstairs and you got commercial space downstairs mm -hmm. and that was just always something that would uh, appeal to me Rashad. like um i always wanted to be the dude that would like i understood early on i think me being a part of the community i understood how commercial space can 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 sway or or um um influence the direction of a community. So a lot of people were just caring about you know houses, um, or or uh, uh, apartments, a duplex. I would go for hey man, if I can put two apartments upstairs and then have a commercial space downstairs, that would be really dope. Also, houses. I did after fourteen years of doing this. I did my first house um last year that was my first house ever i've never done just one house um like single single, single family, family. Single family. Oh, okay house like an investor you was investing yeah, yeah okay. flip. you know it was always at least a duplex you know what i mean or a four unit or a six unit never did one house because one house to me was like it wasn't enough put all that work in the one house and then you got the one income coming out another thing i'm not a flipper i hold all my stuff i built wealth so i always wanted multiple um, forms of income coming from under one roof. So rental property. So rental property. Okay. So one of the most detrimental things you can do in real estate, and why multifamily is so great, I mean literally great, is because you now, if you have one house, and you you rent that house out, right, or you rent that house out, that tenant leaves, you have no more income. If I have three apartments under one roof which is a triplex one tenant leaves i'm still making income from the second third floor or vice versa so i always understood that i need multiple um, um forms of income coming from under one roof also with that even when you're flipping i always tried to if it was a three-story house i would say see if i could legally zone it to make it a duplex that have two apartments under 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 one roof. You know why? Because now I make more money for the same amount of work. So if I got a three story house, and I and now I can turn into two apartments, I can now make an apartment on the first floor in the basement. That's a bi level. I could put a two bedroom, two bath that way. I make the basement lower, make it a nice ceiling, put some egress windows in there. Now you got light coming into the that basement. Doesn't feel like a basement. It feels like a lower level. And now on the second and third floor, I actually have another apartment. I would get that second and third floor roof deck. And I still do this to this day. Now, for the same amount of work that I might only be able to get 400000 for that house, I'm now getting 300000 for two apartments. So now I then took that same structure and, and added $200,000 to the, to, the, to the takeout on it for the same amount of work. So at the height of this, like, how many properties were you managing at, at the same time? Um, this year alone, I'm doing about 42 units. 42. 42 apartments. That you actively manage? I, no, I actually, you? I actually manage over 100 units. Well, 
for this year alone, okay, this oh, you're going to add 42. I'm adding 42 units okay. to my portfolio. Okay. Yeah. How many, how many do you have a total? You said over 100? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they're all mixed use properties? Most of them multi yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. All, all, right. in, all in Philly? All in Philly. So how long of a process did it take you to go from zero to 100 and something? I mean, I've been doing this for a while now. I mean, uh, you know, I could say a decade, you know, I've been doing it for a while, but I sold some stuff and then flipped it right back. You know, you spoke about the two hundred three k loan. Mm-hmm. Do you use that a lot, or that was just for the first property? That was my only property. Yeah, only okay. Using once. Yep. Okay. So when, you defi- as far as your financing, traditional finances from the bank at this yep. point. Yep. Okay. Yep. But other than that, it's been new construction. So I basically buy the land, um, go to the bank, understand when you're financing. A bank will give you about seventy five percent loan to value. So. I don't know if your boy broke it down. Yeah, he talked about loan value, but he talk, you can talk okay. about it too. Okay, so basically, let's say a property is worth, I'm going to keep the number simple. If it's worth uh, $100,000 $100, and the bank will give you 75%, they'll give you $75,000 to buy it and fix it up, right? To buy it and fix it up. Um, me, I want my properties always at, at no more than 55% loan to value. That's buying it and fix it up. So when I get done buying it, building it, I want to be at 55% equity. So the main thing you need to do is understand how much is going to be worth once it's done. Don't worry about how much it's worth right now. Don't worry about how much you're buying it for right now. Some of the properties that I've done that's worth about five, you know, one of my properties is worth about five million. I got into the deal by only having 150 grand. Hmm. And, this, and the, the total project now, excuse me, worth like six mil. You know, because I leveraged the money, but I understood how much it was going to be worth once I build it. That is the main thing. Like, um, you know, when you, they say, you know, uh, I make money when I buy land or when I buy the property. That is the rule, the Bible. You make money when you buy it. So once you buy it, once you build it, and now you have that equity. So if I'm at fifty five, if I'm at fifty percent. The bank is going to give me 75%. That 25% is my cash out. That's yeah, my you, money. You call it the, you got to have the win built in. Yeah, yeah you got to so. have the win built in. I take that 25%, I dump it. I'm back in the roulette tape. I'm putting it back on the board. You know what I'm saying? So the bank gives you a uh, $100,000 property. The bank gives you 75000 mm-hmm. cash. 70, to- 70, 70, not cash. You know, it would be a great world if it was cash. <laughs> They're gonna they gonna slow roll your ass to that. So what they do? So let, let, let me let me let me let me break it down like this. Um, let's say the property is worth going to be worth a hundred grand. Right. Once it's done, it's let's say it's a house. This is and it's and let's say right now it's a shell and you buying the shell right now for twenty thousand. Mm-hmm. Right. It's gonna take you another thirty thousand to fix it up. Now that is you bought it for twenty, you fixed it up for thirty. Is worth a hundred. Hmm. The bank is now going to turn around and give you seventy five thousand. So you already built twenty five in. So now that twenty seventy five, that twenty five thousand dollars is going. That's your money. Yeah. They're going to cut you a check. Now they're cutting you a check. Yeah. But that thirty, they ain't going to cut you a check. They're going to say, all right, get the the demo and the framing done first, and then we'll come out and give you a draw. You know what I mean? So when they say you know you know you do need some money to make money in this business. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or you got to have a a good a great contractor. That is another thing. Have a great contractor, and a great contractor is worth every penny, even if you're paying more down the street. A great contractor would take you to the 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 the, the touchdown, a holy grail, whatever you want to call it. What, so, what's the time frame since you're developing, you're putting the frame? What's the time frame on on ground up for you? I'm one of the fastest builders I believe in the country. I just built thirty thousand square feet in seven months. This guy's taking two years to do that. Um, I got a great crew. Um, I always want, like I told you, man, that money, once it hits, it's ready, set, go. So um, I would say normally if it's a house, you want to be in and out of like a, but depend, that's that's so hard because it depends on the size of the project. I mean, that's 30,000 in seven months. That's <laughs> that's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, But that comes with time too. That yeah. comes with time too or having yeah. a I, I, having a great uh, uh, builder. You know what I mean? And some guys, that's all they do. They just they just are contractors. And, and you're build. drawing up the plans for it? Yeah, I got architects, 
So I have architects that draw up the plans early on. I would draw my own plans. My 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 architectural plans early on was going to a property. I would spray paint the layout, and then the guy would say, "Follow that," and my guys would follow the layout. So like Fernando, he said something interesting. He was saying that his net worth, I think, it was like over like twenty million or probably something like mm -hmm. that. But he said he's net worth rich, cash flow poor, because um, it's hard for him to get loans from the bank because on paper it looks like he's worth a lot of money. But he's not keeping a lot of money. He's yeah. not showing a lot of money because mm -hmm. the money's constantly going back in. Mm -hmm. Right. You run into that problem, or because you get at, traditional financing. So after after you as a developer, you always going to be cash poor. I'm I'm cash I'm cash flow. I hate the word rich. I'm cash, but I'm cash flowing like great. But I have you know debt, good debt. Um, the the cash in the bank. I'm not supposed to keep cash in the bank. You know what I mean? People, I got to understand. Money ain't yours to keep. Money is the for the throw back in, and you do run it into. I run into those. I used to explain run into that, those. Explain that. I don't want. To, that's okay. very important. What you said. Can you fully explain that? What's because right? um, I remember Dame Dad said that before. Like I'm putting my money back in the street. Like, yeah, <laughs> I'm, yeah, saying, I'm yeah. never gonna hold money. Yeah. A lot of people didn't fully understand when he said that. But yeah. as an and entrepreneur, even, even Fernando said that he was like, anytime I see money in my bank, I thinking I could be using that somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. So can you explain that? Like you gotta constantly put the money back in. You gotta constantly put the paper back in, man. You gotta, you know, and you, you like I, I, I gotta say it. Willing and dealing. You gotta constantly be willing and dealing. You know, smart, smart, but willing and dealing. So if I got money and I'm holding it in the bank, right? And I'm just watching in the bank and look pretty or whatever. I got a million dollars in the bank and it's looking pretty. That million dollars need to be like little soldiers out working for me. What is it doing for me? It's losing money due to inflation. So I need to be finding more debt. Or if I make it, then Uncle Sam will come and try to take it. Right? So I need to be putting it back into a, a deal to make me more money. So um, it, that's it's, it's just a, 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 normal, a normal concept. Money is not yours to like keep money is as soon as you get it it's a reason why you pay your bills and why you pay this and why you pay that and you get it again and now you gotta pay people or whatever that's the purpose of it. once people start understanding that money is meant to be used not hoarded you'll start making you'll start seeing your, your business and things grow money is is also for to, to to invest in people i don't i have a small staff your people is going to take you to the to the promised land my contractor, my con my foreman, man, that dude, you know, those guys, man, they make more than doctors. But you know what? They treat my stuff like it's theirs. I mean, they'll come, it's raining. We don't even have a plumbing service in my in one of my apartment buildings. This is a big, you know, it's a five thousand square foot roof. He's going over there in the middle of the night to make sure that the water pump is well is working. You know what I'm saying? It's not even his property, but that's the type of guys you want working for you. That's me. And I was with this dude. I've been investing in this guy for seven years, you know what I'm saying, when he was starting out his little company. So you always is willing and dealing. You always is putting the money back in to grow your business. This is you like you got a like real all money in campaign you got going. Nah, it's all money <laughs> in. That's why when you said that, it's more it's bigger than just a rap slogan. Like it's all money in. Sure. And that's, that's yeah. I'm, I'm glad you said that because people people do it all the time. Like we spoke about it with Chris Gotti, where people skim on important things and they don't want to pay people or. They don't want to put money back into their business. They want to just live off of that money. Like, you know what I mean? Well, it's some like, selfish shit. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? they get a thousand dollars. Now they want to go to Miami for the weekend. Right, right, <laughs> like, nah, right. we we in business. Right. You got you to put that money back in. You might not really be able to fully ball off of your business for two years, three years, sometimes even five years. But right. in that time, it's like a snowball effect. The problem exactly. is if you keep taking money from it, you're never going to chance to grow. It's it's always going to be where you started it at. Exactly. It's always going to be where you started it. Like like vacations, man. Like my vacation, I've I've I haven't even been overseas yet. I've I've been to Jamaica. In life. In life, I, I've been to Jamaica and I've been uh I've been uh, and I don't recommend that. But like it's I don't need a vacation for my life because I love what I do. You know, I remember uh, uh, Ray Lewis told me he's he's you know he's like uh, and he says it a lot. He said my work is my grind. My, he said, my grind is my relaxation. So when I was worried about something, it would, and I would, you know, some people run from it. I would, I would run to it. You know what I mean? Like me relaxing is me building the property. That's you like Al I mean? Aliko 
didn't go to. Yeah, he didn't take a vacation for 20 years. Aliko didn't go to. The, he's richest, the richest black, the richest person, black person in the world. On, that's Earth. my point. He's, he's, worth, years, he's never, worth like $12 billion oh, in Nigeria. Exactly. His first 20 years, he didn't take a vacation for the first 20 you years. Know he went, you know where he went when he went? Finally took it? Miami. Miami, exactly. Because <laughs> it's like, it's like, yo, I don't need, I got, you know, friends and girls. Oh, you got to come with me to Two Abu places. Dhabi. And, and, all this. and I'm like, man, I, I'm like, it looks nice. Yeah, it's cool. But it's like, yo, I got, I got, I got 30 toilets coming next week. I got to, I got to make sure I hit that mark, you know? And it's like, because that, when that refund, when that refinance check come, that's my, that's, that's man, look. That's the real vacation. That's the real vacation. <laughs> that, that, that feeling better than sex, man. That's better than an orgasm. Yo, man. So, so, so let's so talk was, about the new property. Yeah. So the new property you got. Um, but we, before we go to the new property, we got to talk about the commercial space, right? You said mm -hmm. mixed use property. Um, you started a uh, cafe and a lounge with, yeah. with with a college classmate, or did you guys know each other through school? No, no. I I, I started I started myself, but I I brought a cat on who uh, who was known in the city to like. Uh, open up, help open up restaurants. Mm -hmm. Once again, it didn't work out, but he he helped me open it. He didn't know what he was doing with management wise, um, but he helped me open it. And then once it was open, I found he didn't know what he was doing management wise. Once again, I had to learn on the fly the restaurant business in a matter of weeks. And but what I what what I tell people to do, first of all, the first the, the uh, diversifying is a bad word. You know, you if you look at the richest people in the world, they only are good at one or two things. Right. You don't you don't see Mark Zuckerberg, you know, starting to open up fried chicken spots or whatever. Right? That dude, he he Facebook, 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 Facebook. Oh, OK. This is a one off of Facebook called Instagram. I'll buy you for a billion. Now, Facebook and Instagram, Facebook and Instagram, Amazon, uh, Amazon, 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 Amazon. And then, OK, that's Whole Foods. Are right, we going to buy Whole Foods? Because we start to once we became the richest company in the world. Now we can buy Whole Foods. Now, let you know how important real estate is. What is Amazon doing? They buying up mad real estate because yeah. they got to find ways to make wealth. I don't care what level you on. That's why they, y'all, unfortunately, y'all lost them. New York was about to get them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? we, we covered that. Yeah, they, we talked about that. Amazon, like, real estate-wise, like, they, I don't know if people don't notice, but they're, like, buying up old malls because malls, like, traditionally were built in, the, like, the hubs of cities, right? Mm -hmm. But as retail spaces close. Amazon's coming in like we don't need to build the infrastructure. It's already here. It's already and now, here. since they're trying to move from two day shipping to now same day shipping, now they have the mall that's right near you just to deliver it. You know what I'm saying? So hey, like, it's about to be crazy. They, 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 they about the they rule the world. They about to be <laughs> yeah, ruling yeah, the world. For sure. No, like for sure. And and but it also shows even though the money they turn they worth one trillion dollars. Yeah. Not one hundred billion. Not what two hundred billion, three hundred billion worth one trillion dollars. They still need to park their money in assets called, and that's why they're coming around saying, look, we're going to put a billion dollars and build three to 33 towers in this city, in this city, because that's real estate. Real estate is one of them, is the most important like asset you can you can actually own. So uh, with Common Grounds, with uh, uh, my cafe, uh, back to that, I got tired. I just always wanted, like I said, you know, the commercial aspect of things always um, uh, appealed to me. So my first commercial venture is Studio Forty Four, my hair salon. That was that was my first commercial venture, um, of of I own a three a four unit building, and on in the in the fifth unit is uh, I made a, a beauty salon, and uh, we're redoing that right now, um, and about to revamp it and reopen it. Next, I just saw and started going. I never drank coffee, you know, for my whole life until two years ago. And the only reason I started drinking coffee is because I started liking coffee shops. I started liking how they looked and the and the vibe. And then, you know, you see the honeys coming in and like <laughs> people doing their work and Free it was real vibe. intellectual. It was like a whole vibe. Yeah. It was a whole vibe. And I was like, I don't like coffee because I don't want to stain my teeth. But I said, but you know what? I need to start drinking it. I need to start feeling it. I need to start getting used to how it feels to be in here, how the machines look and how fast people should be in and out. Yeah, Cause I'm gonna invest in my own uh, spot, and then I couldn't get Starbucks. I couldn't get like a, a other, a, you know, the, the smaller the Starbucks, but bigger name spots um, to come into into the, the neighborhoods I invested in into the hood. So I said, you know what, man, you know, 
fuck, I'm gonna open up my own. Why well, ask? We're not even asking no more. No, I'm not even asking no more. And I and I I, I did it. It's uh, but I took a risk small enough for me. If it failed, that it was like, okay, I'm only out thirty grand. I mean, I'm only out eighty, eighty, seventy thousand dollars. It's a write off, and I can just rent the space out to somebody that does want to do a coffee shop, or I could just rent the space out to somebody else and just collapse it, and, and it's a learning lesson. It actually, started working out, you know. And I call it Common Grounds. And it's a millennial-based cafe that all I feel like Starbucks, did you see them trying to revamp? But Starbucks, to me, remind me of like old heads and like older people and like the baby boomers. And it, it got the it's Starbucks. But a lot of other um, individual coffee spots are now starting to take take over. Like people want those cool, hip coffee spots. And I said, there's no, no coffee spots uh, pertaining to the millennial and college base. So... Uh, I made my coffee spot look like like a tattoo parlor or like a lounge, and we call it common grounds because um, it's in an area that's gentrifying. So it's a common space that people can or ground that people can come and mingle, you know, from all different nationalities away the way the world. And then grounds tie in with the coffee. So we got cool neon lights. We play, you know, um, uh, intellectual stuff. We play Drake. We got traps sun uh, sad Saturdays or whatever. It's, it's a dose. How space. many units above common ground? A uh, three, three. Okay. Yep. You know, you know what? Um, Albert Einstein once said, "Imagination is better than than information or knowledge." Right, and the reason why he said that is because, especially to be an entrepreneur, you have to have creativity, mm-hmm. right? Yep. And that's one thing I like about just from listening to you. I could tell that you're a creative person, right? Mm-hmm. Even from taking the money from your scholarship and using it and finagling that and thinking about different things. And I think that that's one of the biggest things. A lot of times people want blueprints on how to be an entrepreneur. There's no blueprint for it. You got to be creative. got to be creative. And right. use your God-given ability to think on your feet, right? And that's one of the things that, you know, a lot of times in our day-to-day life, you know, we have families and you get a job and you're so tired. What it does is it drains your creativity. Exactly. And it takes your ambition away and you just get used to your day-to-day life, right? Yep. And that's one of, like, even for me being an entrepreneur, that's what I love the, the most because I have f- freedom to think. To think. Mm. Like, you don't it's even powerful. realize that you it's don't powerful. have freedom to think until you don't. Like, right. it's set up from nine to five. You that's come home, you get point. your kid, you walk your door. You don't have time to think. Like, right. You know what I'm saying? The average person don't have time to think. And that's so powerful. Like, the, when we talk to people, that's like one common thing. Like, I could just tell you got a lot going on in your head. And I encourage people, take a half an hour, take an hour out of your day and just meditate just think like yeah. you never know what what you can come up with like what ideas can come up with everybody has a million dollar idea you just have to actually be able to put it together put it yeah. together right. exactly what what the richest dude in the world bezos who owns amazon mm-hmm. right guess what his morning ritual is meditation he wakes up and he sits in the bed and just thinks now you have to yeah that's yeah. just that's his blueprint. You he's have to, just, I, and he's just a man. He's just thinking. no. It's the best feeling in the world. I, I do that every day. And Kanye actually said that too, right? Where Kanye was like, for the first half an hour, hour, he don't do nothing. Yeah. He just thinks. And a lot of times, people can't relate. It's hard for people to understand a creative if they're not a creative. Oh yeah, absolutely. Right, but once you get in that zone, you understand like this is powerful. I tell Troy yeah. that. My summer's a little different because I have to take my son to camp. But during outside of that, I get to think for like a half an hour, hour, and it changes your whole day. Yeah. It does. It yeah. really does. You it's never right. feel like, more alive than the, that. The environmental change too. Like I was in an environment like I teach, so I was in an environment in, in the city. It was like just making it through the day was like, yo, Draining. that is that's the win, right? And then I changed right. I, mean, I went to a different school district. And like, I don't know, like my mind has been free to think. Like, so like even doing this, like the podcast in itself, it was like, I got so many ideas. Cause like my environment has changed. Nah, that's, that's, me up that's, to another, that's, that's another thing too, not to get off topic, but we're not off topic. We staying on course is mm-hmm. that everything plays a part, even small things. So he used to be a teacher in the Bronx, right? And mm-hmm. I, I, I'm a financial advisor. So mm-hmm. he asked me to come speak to his kids. Yeah. And I'll never forget when I went to the school, they had bars on the window, and I had to get checked in from a security guard. Oh, I'm yeah. like, how are they supposed to learn this environment? I feel exactly. like I'm in jail. I feel like I'm going well, to jail. Down to the paint. Like, the paint is blue, just like jail. They got the metal detectors. You got to walk through. We're talking about 10-year-olds. That's crazy. Coming through on a daily basis. That's, you know what I'm saying? It's like, sad, man. Forget of all the things that they saw coming to school. Now they got to go through this. Bars on the windows. There's no going outside. Like, you in from 9, 8.30 most times to 3.30. It's like... 
Yo, what we doing? <laughs> yeah, but, like, but it's a reason. Like, if you ever go to like any of these tech companies, there's no. It's like an open space environment. Open space, space. Yeah. white walls, yeah, exactly. glass. Yeah, yeah. It's a reason. Green space. Yeah, sure. You could you could think better. That's crazy. That's a great point, man. And that, that's one of the reasons why I try so hard to to be successful. Um, is is because uh to give back to that type of thing. I you know I was uh the um the police district and and around where I invest that they did their first uh, which I thought was dope first community outreach cookout. Uh, and for it to be a police district to do that in a black neighborhood to have a block party, that was like amazing. And I funded the whole thing for the police district. And um, just to see those kids, uh, you know, with the balls and then the SWAT team was out there so the kids can go through the SWAT car. I'm a, I'm a big, I love like Army. I, anybody that's listening that is a police officer or in the Army, you know, I appreciate your service. Um, and uh, just to see that was dope. And they saw a black man handing the big check. I told the captain, I said, I want the big lottery check when I'm on stage, you know what Yo, I'm saying? This is a, you, you are really the Broad Street bully, man. Uh, <laughs> like, I'm the ghost you, of Philly. You, you running Philly right I'm now. I'm ghost of, I am, I get called ghost of Philly. The ghost yeah, of Philly. Ghost of Philly, yep. You know, and my life is little, it's very similar. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, no, um, um, yeah, and I'm, um, for them to see that at my coffee shop the other day, I got I posted on my gram in a coffee shop or whatever. It was these three three black kids or whatever. And I and listen, my coffee shop, I get a lot of uh, college students in there. So I was, you know, and we we um, we were definitely we were very affordable, but we do like the lattes, like like high end coffee stuff, you know. And um, I had three black kids that walked in, and they uh and they was like, yeah, man, you know, we don't want no um. I want some healthy food. And I was like, you want some healthy food? I was like, what you like, hey, like what you want? Like, we got like a I was like, you might like our barbecue chicken, uh, I mean a buffalo chicken wrap, you know what I'm saying? I can give you that. And they other his friends was like, oh, I want some pizza. He was like, nah, I'm gonna I'll take that. I said, What you got? And he was like, I got five dollars. I said, it cost seven. And he was I was like, oh, I was like, I want your five dollars, I'll spot you the other two. Cause I wanted to teach him like everything you do gonna, gonna cost. Yeah. And um, and we ended up giving everybody coffee. So gave him free coffee and that, and they was like they eating. And he was like, "What you work here?" <laughs> <laughs> that's right, what, that's the mentality. That's the mentality. And I said, "No, I own it." And they was like, "You own this place?" I said, "I own it." He said, "No, you own this place." I said, "Yeah, man, this is my spot." I was like these white people, they work for me. And he was like, and they and you, they, they, they couldn't believe it. And like you know, I'm getting like emotional right now. That was why I do it. You know, that's like one reason why I do it. I don't do this for the money. The thing that makes me like the the most um, favorite is when I have bankers and most of my bankers have been white. I have some black that believe to invest money in me, a tatted, big like football looking black dude, you know what I'm saying? With, 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 with a mohawk, with a hair bun, you know, that can recognize I'm intelligent enough to play that type of uh, development game, and then I'm able to give them their money back and make them whole. Or when I have people moving into my space that I created, you talk about being creative, I see myself as an artist, not as a real estate developer, you know? And people are moving into the space that was once dirt, and now they're moving in and they're enjoying themselves and bringing their friends over to, to check out what I built for them. That's- That's gotta be crazy. That's, you know, that's where, the enjoyment, the one house I, I told you guys about, that was the, my first house I ever built. That was to an army vet, you know, him and his wife. And I gave them like a, a good deal on it for like uh, 30 grand below the price. Cause I, I made, a, I still made a killing on the, on the property. Um, and, uh, and it was right before Christmas and he was able to get in there for the holidays. Like those are, that's why I feel like the universe continues to bless me where I am, where I'm at. You know, I've turned, I got two young black brothers. I didn't turn them into millionaires and in, in investing in real estate. They came in my office. You know what I'm saying? I had them intern for me and they went out on their own. Shout out to Patrick. And um, yeah, man, that's that's what it's about. So your newest project with the, how many how many uh, units is it? 22 units? It oh, is, the, the, the yeah. lots, the four lots. The four the lots. Four yeah, lots. Total, that's, it's a total of 22 units yeah. and a total of... Uh, about three thousand square feet of commercial. So yeah, twenty-two unit apartment building. Yeah, 
Yeah. Can we talk about that? Yeah, let's talk about it. You know uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that, that, that's that, that. Oh, you want to do it? Now? No, you got it. Go ahead. All right. So, um, that that didn't come without uh, a few few bumps in the road. Absolutely. And um, you know, the the city was on your back. The and, city is on my back, bro. Um, and uh, mm-hmm. the reason they're on your back because they're saying that you got the property undervalued. So they're saying that you know what uh, the it appraised for one hundred fifty thousand to two hundred thousand dollars, and you got it well under that. But yeah, there's a, there's, there's a behind the scenes story that they didn't know. Oh uh, yeah, to explain it? you know. So first of all, it is a a political. Um, anytime it's a it's a uh, election year in Philly, and um, anytime it's election year, you know, people just try to pull up there and all that type of stuff. But to make a long story, uh, make a long story longer, um, <laughs> it was they basically gave me that prop, uh, 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 praise at first for like, and I, I'm not I'm going to talk say too much on it, but they gave it uh, a praise. And like 130 grand, I put down a check for like thirteen thousand dollars back then, and at that, and they took it, the ten percent down, and signed it, signed the contract. That's a contract at the end of the day. You know, you can uh, uh, sue for something called specific performance at that point in time, and I didn't. And once I didn't do that, uh, um, um, you know, they, uh, I once I, uh, hope the, well, that didn't happen after the fact. Once I put the check down, I'm thinking everything is cool. Like three months, four months later, they hit me up and was like, nah, 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 130 grand is too cheap, man. I'm like, yo, <laughs> what do you mean, right? So I'm like, all right, whatever. So the, the Philly, the Philadelphia uh, Redevelopment Authority, that's yeah. who hit you, came back? Like, yeah. wait, wait, we gave that to you yeah, for yeah. the price? Yeah. All right. And I was like, all right, well, let's see. They went from 130 to 490. And I'm like, wow. Hold up. Right, hold up. <laughs> like, hold up. <laughs> so so I'm like, so I'm like, yo, nah, man, you guys did this. Like, I, you know, we can and it was at a standstill. Make a long story short. Um, you know, they came down on the number. I came, came, came high, high up, paid over half. They, they didn't even meet me halfway. And ended up paying three hundred and seventy thousand dollars for the land. And one of the reasons why they went from four ninety three seventy. A big part of that is because I was able to show, and this is about, I said before, about knowing what real estate is worth, knowing what your stuff is worth. Study your craft. You know, you hear people say that all the time, study your craft, study your craft. I'm a great negotiator, big in part, because I know a lot of times I'm not perfect. You know, I done made a lot of mistakes. I'm going to make even more mistakes. But um, I know what the real estate is worth. And at the time, the zoning for those lots even though they were big, the zoning didn't allow you to take advantage of the true size that you can build. So I can build a big building, but I only can put two apartments in it when it's big enough for three. Mm-hmm. That Just to make it easy for you to comprehend. Because mm-hmm. the zoning laws had changed for just that slit of a moment. And I was able to tell and show and prove to the redevelopment authority, yo, look at this. Yeah, down the street, sold for that because the zoning allowed them to take advantage of a building that size. You know, they allowed to put three units in the building that size. Now, municipalities, y'all changed, the, they changed the zoning code. I can build a building that size, but I'm still only going to be able to put two, two units in it. So it ain't really worth what that is. And they did their research on top of saying, like, you know what? We actually really could get sued too because we did cash that check for 13 and they came down. Only at twenty five thousand a lot. That still ain't a lot of money. I still paid a hundred, basically a hundred ninety two thousand five a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, two thousand and sixteen. You know what I'm saying? Fast forward. You know, I build one, put common grounds in the other. Now they see this big apartment building coming up. Now they like, oh, 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 you got it for too cheap. We didn't know. You know, another developer probably hating because he's salty. You know, definitely salty. It, or some, or you know, somebody mad at such and such uh, the council person or whatever. I ain't, listen, man. Like, I, you know, I don't even know that uh, uh, um, um, uh, the councilman. Uh, yeah, they try to tell you to a councilman. They're like, no you know, way. He, he he had to push the button to get this through for you. Yeah, he does have to push the button. He support he supported me, but right. it was that was it. Like, yeah. you got to support every developer. But uh, making a long story short, it's because a black man was playing white man's game and and doing well off of it. That and was somebody it. else that was supporting you was black also. Yes, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Like, uh, what, what's the problem? Because the councilman was black. Exactly. They're black, so it's like, they got to be. Oh, they're working together. They got <laughs> to be working together. There's it no got to be a conspiracy. It can't be low. This is a dope, a dope real estate developer that improved itself and is now, you know, proving itself again with a great deal. 
it's not like I got the land for free. You know, I still right. paid four hundred thousand. You know, and fill it for some dirt in Philadelphia. So, but um, prevail. So that's it's, yeah. always, it's never going to be a smooth ride. It's always going to be ups and downs. But yeah, and business it put me on the map even more. Got yeah, my street cred up even more. <laughs> you know, what I mean, it made me even more of a a, G, a, a legend and 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 a young OG in and that game. Got to tell them the title of the, of the building. The title of the building is called the Bullard. It is absolutely. Why not? Why why not? not? You know, yeah. I love the ring. If Trump could call his building the Trump Towers, why not? Why yeah. not? It is it, the bullock. Exactly. Legacy. Legacy. Hustle for your last name, as my t shirt says. Shameless yeah. plug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you talk about the skincare line? Yeah, so the skincare line, this is that's now this is gonna be funny. Um so I came out, I did a in in um uh a song called Zaddy. What you call <laughs> right? You know, creative. You know what's funny, man? I dressed up like a pharaoh and I had these girls in my in my joint and I I uh, uh, you made the video. I made the this video. Is rapping. Yeah. Was this before Bloodline or was this during Bloodline? No, 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 no this, this is, is this is like oh, for this, last year. For this, oh, right. for this, right? For this. <laughs> and um, we shot it party in the Milano store. Y'all ever heard of Milano? The, the yeah, girl? yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? She's doing, she doing some big things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, that was like with with um, uh, my my former uh, girlfriend. She was behind the desk. She's she's you know Marquita's is is is, is uh, bad as hell. And I had her in the joint <laughs> sidebar. You know, and he's <laughs> sitting down. And uh, I warped back to from the Egyptian to the future to get my Egyptian like like goddess goddesses like uh, red bottoms. That's what a zaddy do. You know what I'm saying? You you buy and now warp back. Wait, this footage of this? Oh, this is the the, the video, right? Oh, we gotta we gotta see this. So it's some funny. <laughs> shit. The song is funny. I, I got it it's on iTunes. Everything, right? Anyway, so at the time, I make this song or whatever. You know, it, it's so stupid, so ratchet. But being. <laughs> <laughs> but then, then I see you know what's funny. But then I see Drake and Migos having Jerry curls and exactly, redoing yeah. the Soul Train uh, yeah, yeah. giant. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, "Yo, I'm in the clear, <laughs> right?" So, so make a long story short, I told my um, I told my 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 lawyers who are in their I, my IP lawyers, my intellectual property lawyers in Miami. And I told him, I said, uh, I was like, look, I want to copyright my 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 songs. Okay, he said copyright it. And then my song was like, Zaddy, 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 Zaddy. I said, I want to copyright that because I don't want to hear nobody saying that, right? So then I fly down there. And before I fly down there, I went to CVS. And in CVS, I'm walking down the men's aisle because, you know, we all got beards or whatever. Yeah. And it was my first time I ever saw that they had the men's section for like self-care and bears, like actually dressed up nice and appealing. Normally the men's section is like the little <laughs> hole in the wall in the corner. You gotta ask somebody. And, and the women's <laughs> joint is like, come and get it. They got the models, they got the bright lights, the LED around it. And I was like, yo, and it was dope. And I saw like all these bear cares and I saw like, you know, like rejuvenation and like the shaving stuff. And it reached out to me. So I fly out of Miami. And I, I, I meet with my lawyers every time I go down there or whatever. And uh, we sitting down. I said, you know, I got to take something off this Zaddy name. I got to, like, make more off of it. I was like, close. And they like, eh. You know, I was like, close. And she started explaining to me. And then at that split second in their office, and my, my lawyers, you know, they, they bad too. They got the, the, <laughs> the creative space. You know what I'm saying? You know, Brianna and and, and, shout and, to and Brenda, shout, shout, shout out to you, to shout to you guys. Double B, Brianna and Brenda. Brianna and Shammy, L, uh, LP in Miami. And um, <laughs> and they was like, uh, and I thought back to CVS and I was like, fucking men's skincare. And they looked at me, I looked at them like, y'all motherfuckers better not steal my idea. And they looked at me like, yo, that is a great idea. And... I was like, I want to get on it right now, start trademarking it, start doing this, that, and the third, because I understood the brand and the name. So people was like, people are like, why don't call yourself Zaddy? Why you do this with your Zaddy? Like you guys not thinking. When you Google the what Zaddy means, a guy pops up on a car and says, "Sexy, uh, a sophisticated, fashionable man," right? If I walk in and I came into you with an idea and I said, hey, I own a body wash called Old Spice, I would have to explain to you what Old Spice means and why it's going to be appealing to men. Now, Old Spice is one of the biggest last longing brands in history. Zaddy already has a term that means 
sexy, sophisticated, fashionable man. No explanation needed. Zaddy already, already is used by the bloggers in Hollywood. Who's the top 25 Zaddies? Brad Pitt, Idris Alba. Um, you know, they, they'll they'll say uh, uh, Michael B. Jordan. You know, they might even say Sean Bullard. Anyway, they, uh, so <laughs> same with fuck. So, same with fuck. <laughs> so you got you got Ty Dolla songs. He came out with a hit song called Zaddy. You got the Shade Room. This is a Zaddy. So it's like, <laughs> wait, what's you on? <laughs> they had you up there. Well, we're not talking about that. Right, right, right. And that's that's what my see, that's my job when I'm going with this brand of, of the Zaddy for some men's skincare is man, he's a shy. He didn't want to like first of all, all you guys in this room is handsome men, man. You know, like it's cool for us to be like, yo, man, like we we provide Zaddy is basically I want to I'm making it and and I'm 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 basically it's it's a slow grind. It's gonna take like a year to get out or whatever. Um, the first thing was getting a trademark, but to show, you know, that we are, like I said on the back, it is, a zaddy is a guy who's attractive and fashionable, a gentleman who believes in the old school value of chivalry, a provider, sophisticated, but tough. That's me. And I believe there's a lot of men that are like that. And, and, you know, there's nothing wrong with saying, you know, Hey man, you know, I provide for my family. I provide for my lady. And that's what a zaddy is. I just took it to the level of business because the brand makes sense as a skincare product. So going back to real estate, I want to be a billionaire one day. And to me, when you look at Kylie Jenner, she's a billionaire because she is selling her brand. That lipstick that she got, that same lipstick is being sold for $5 somewhere. But she's stamping her name on it, putting some colors to it, and she's charging it for $35 to $55, right? right? Because of the brand. So if this already means a guy that cares about his looks, a guy, when a girl walks in the room, is going to be like, ooh, zaddy, or whatever, I have this skincare line to provide that brand. Now, when you look at, I look at everything I said with real estate, subscription-based, everything is going subscription-based, Amazon. So, a lot of guys with shavers, they don't even, it come out, they check every uh, 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 bank account every month, 30 bucks, get the shavers in the mail, or if you got supplements, I'm in the gym a lot, all my supplements come, I'm a subscription, 50 bucks, I get my proteins or whatever in the mail, same thing with Zaddy. So, if you do the math, right, and Zaddy Men's Skin Care, don't even have to be in Neiman Marks, don't even have to be in Target, just off of the subscriptions. Now, how many men is in the, in the country? Like 220 million. If I sell a package for 60 bucks subscription and you get the Oregon beard oil, you get I don't, avocado face cream, which is a rejuvenation. Let's say you get like uh, the lotion or the body wash, which is homo sapien. That's what we call it. Then and my clear off of that and I just get 200,000 subscribers, just 200. And my clear off of that is 20000 off of 60 bucks because a lot of your money gets eaten up in, in supply chain and all that sort of stuff. Out of 200000 on the 20000 that is $4 million a month cleared. A month, not a year, a month because of the brand and this name and this meaning. It's not funny anymore. Now, now it's not funny. Now it's like, oh, I am. Zaddy, oh, right. Can I invest in that Zaddy? <laughs> Tell a different so, joke. <laughs> Tell a different joke. So these are the things of being creative. You know, when it's a saying, you have to start being comfortable being uncomfortable. And I've always been comfortable being uncomfortable. I've never... I just heard that. Somebody said your life starts when your comfort ends. Yeah, when your comfort ends. That, I've never been more alive in my life. Man, when I see myself in those newspapers and I got... You know, this person calling me and I'm like, yo, they trying to talk about I'm bribing people and all this, man. That's when I bow up and I was like, yo, I'm willing and dealing now. Let's have it. Let's let's go. You know what I mean? When when I when people was like, oh, you can't call yourself Zaddy. Well, how's your Instagram Sean underscore Zaddy underscore Bullard? I'm like, I'm like, chick, I'm like, first of all, you can't tell me what to do with my name. That's number one. People gotta stop telling people that. People gotta stop listening to those type of people. Number two, it's like, you'll see, it ain't funny after a while. A lot of people get it though, you know what I'm saying? So the skincare line is coming out next year. Um, the, we, we're done uh, I'm done making the, uh, the prototypes. It's amazing, it's all natural, organic. 
Um, 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 we have a, a rejuvenation. I'm a 38 year old man that looks like, you know, black don't crack. I look like I'm 28 mm. and I want to keep looking like I'm 28. So I have my whole line is called immortality. And the immortality line is like the avocado face cream. I got the the, 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 the serum. I have the, um, the eye cream for like the patches or whatever. We have the Oregon beard oil, you know what I'm saying? And this, we got the charcoal and um, uh, uh, body, the charcoal and coconut scrub or whatever. We got the shea butter lotion. It's cool names, it's high-end stuff. And I wanna make it affordable. And you know what? It, it came to me and it made sense. If business makes sense to you and you catch on to it easy, that's something that's worth taking a, a risk on. You know? And, I, and for all people out there, it's not about patents. Trademarks are so much cheaper and trademarks are undeniably 100% for, like, are, are, uh, are tamper proof. You cannot tamper with a trademark. You know, patents, people can get around it. Like Vanilla Ice, he said, my drone was dun, 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 da, da, dun, dun. <laughs> dun, da, da, dun, dun. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can get around patents. You up a sugar count, down a sugar count, this, that, and the third. But trademarks is your trademark. That's powerful. That's powerful. We want to thank you. Yeah, thank you for coming to in. Everybody who comes and does episodes. Yeah. Welcome to the Love Knock. Yeah, yeah nah, for sure, man. Um, can, can you I get a pick? Like, sit right here? Oh, yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to do that after. Yeah, after. Yeah. Um, can you tell the people your social media handles and how to reach you? Um, yeah, the social media uh, handle is uh, Sean. Uh, that's S-H-A-W-N underscore Zaddy. Z-A-D-D-Y underscore Bullard. B-U-L-L-A-R-D. All right, cool, cool. Troy, Common Grounds, Philly. Um, the Bullard's opening. The Bullard uh, should be, one? yeah, the Bullard should be opening in a few weeks now. Yeah, yeah. It will be opening in a few weeks. It'll be done in August uh, 1st, and it'll be opening probably like August 15th. Just in time for school. Just in time. <laughs> just in time for school. Even though we don't got all college students in there, but just in time for school. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Troy. Yeah, man. Um, so shout out to everybody that's on uh, Patreon, all our patrons. Uh, that's supporting the, the podcast. We got some new ones this week. So I just want to shout out Robert, Johnny, and Sarita. As you know, Patreon is a proud to pay program. If you want to financially support the podcast so we can come to cities like how we just uh, left Atlanta. Um, and we got a few more cities that we need to touch. So keep supporting. We'll keep adding the content on there. Uh, we kinda, we had a busy week last week. So Extremely. We, we, owe, we owe some oh, some man. phone calls. And yeah. we're we going we definitely going to uh, reach out. Shout out to Crystal, who's in Japan. She reached out from Japan. Yeah. Uh, so we're trying to figure nah, out the times to, to get in yeah, contact was, with her. That was dope. Atlanta was dope. Um, you know, we did a networking event in Atlanta, and somebody from the Virgin Islands came. That's yeah. awesome. Like, yeah. just for the networking event. Um, we had people, like, drive two hours. Tennessee, people coming from Tennessee. Tallahassee. Florida. So it's crazy, man. We, 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 we really appreciate your support, and especially in a short period of time, for you know, to have that impact. But it's because we provide an information and bringing people on like yourself. So we yeah, got to thank the guests. And, and, and thank you guys for checking us out. Don't forget the merch. For sure. Um, our merch shop is up, earnyourleisure.com. I'm wearing the merch. Troy's wearing the merch. We got to give you a shirt before you yeah, leave. Yeah, for I sure. appreciate it. For sure. And um, the book tip of the week is a book called The 12-Week Year. So the, the theory behind the 12-week year is that, you know, a lot of times we set goals. Most of the time you set a goal January 1st for the year, right? 90%, 95% of people never actually reach their goal because it's too long. Like if you have a goal, okay, I want to make $100,000 for the year. Mm. How are you going to do that, right? So the 12-week year is to say you break it down to 12 weeks. So each year is 12 weeks. And each week you put together an actionable plan and at the end of the month you review it. So it's a lot easier to accomplish big goals if you break it down. And I'm a, I'm a big proponent of that. So I actually do that myself now where every single week on Sunday, I look, I set my goal for the next week, and then I have a yearly. It's a lot easier to look in short periods of time as opposed to a long period of Absolutely. time. Absolutely. So I recommend that 12-week um, year. And, um, yeah, that's it, man. Yeah. Thank you for rocking with us. We'll see you next week. Peace. Peace. Peace.